Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Dr. Brian Capra from Billing Precision, and we are lucky to have on the phone Dr. Marty Cutler from Target Coding. Uh, we have a great synergy between our two companies for our clients. As you know, we're always dedicated to giving you the latest uh, information about compliance and documentation and coding. And uh, Dr. Marty Cutler from Target Coding is one of the foremost experts in that field. Well, thank you, Dr. Cutler, for joining us today. Um, for those of you who don't know Dr. Kotler, uh, a little bit about Dr. Kotler. He was in practice for 16 years before he started target coding about nine years ago. And since then, he's basically been traveling the country and lecturing uh, at Parker semin seminars, at foot levelers, at various state associations. Um, he's certified in healthcare compliance, a certified coder. Part one is uh, the history, which is uh, what we're going to be going through today. Uh, next time, we're going to do examination findings, then the diagnosis, patient clinical goals, services to be rendered, the schedule of care. We're going to go through SOAP notes in Part 7 and reevaluations in Part 8. Part 1, which is the history. Uh, the first six parts of this uh, webinar series is about creating a treatment plan. Uh, treatment plans are no longer uh, optional. Just about every carrier, including Medicare, wants to see a good quality treatment plan created for every new patient. So it all starts with the patient's first visit to your office. First of all, when the patient walks in the door, they should fill out a good quality health history intake form. Um, this is a form that um, should have proper information, and I'm going to share with you uh, what information should be on it that will allow you to substantiate the code you're billing just by having a good quality intake form. I'll share that with you in a couple of minutes. Now, uh, along with a good quality intake form, the patient should be filling out any other pertinent forms uh, in your practice like uh, you know, HIPAA forms, patient privacy forms, assignment of benefits, authorization to release information. Um, you may have specialized forms if the patient's been in a car accident. Um, if you have, uh, if you take care of a lot of kids, you may have a separate form for pediatric chiropractic services. So after all the forms are filled out, now we're going to have these six items that should be uh, performed on the first visit, and that's the history, exam, diagnosis, short and long-term goals, list the services to be rendered, and the clinical rationale as to why, and the visit schedule. You see, when uh, I talk to a lot of chiropractors, they you know, when I say, well, tell me about your treatment plan, they typically say, oh, well, uh, I tell patients to come in three times a week for four weeks and then two times a week for eight weeks and then one time a week for 12 weeks, and that's my treatment plan. Well, that's not a treatment plan. That's number six. On the, as, if you look on the screen here, you'll see the visit schedule. That's just one part of a treatment plan. Just giving out the frequency and duration of care is not a treatment plan. So I want people to understand that treatment plan is important. Here we go. We're going to start with step one, which is the history. There are four types of histories, problem-focused history, expanded problem-focused, detailed, and comprehensive. Now, um, the information that I'm going to be sharing with you is based on guidelines. There are evaluation and management guidelines that were created by the AMA and uh, CMS many years ago. These are the ones that Aetna, Cigna, United Healthcare, State Farm, Allstate, all the major carriers use these guidelines. So um, you want to make sure that you're aware of them and you start using them so you can justify the services you're billing and you can appeal if you ever get denied. First step is um, figuring out which history that you perform. So I'm going to concentrate on the detailed history because that's the most commonly billed new patient code, 99203. So what is a detailed history? I'll tell you what it is. It's, it must include a, a chief complaint, four HPIs or history of present illnesses, two to nine systems must be reviewed, and at least one past history, family history, or social history must be part of your um, documentation for the first visit. So it must include a chief complaint, which is a concise statement describing the symptom, condition, diagnosis, or other factors that are the reason for the encounter, usually stated in the patient's own words. So Mrs. Jones walks into your office and says she has low back pain. Well, there you go. There's the chief complaint. Now you have to provide four items. If you're going to be billing out 99203, it requires four items to be documented about the presenting problem. So in chiropractic college, you may have been taught uh, the OPQRST, similar to the HPI, which is the history of present illness, so the location, quality, you know, is it dull, throbbing, aching, burning, 
Is it um, intermittent? Is it, uh, you know, you can give it a pain scale. What makes it worse? What makes it better? You need to document four of those. That's pretty easy for most chiropractic practices. This one is easy to do, but it's oftentimes skipped. I've reviewed a lot of files, probably thousands of files over the last nine years as a, a certified coder. And um, when I look at files, I very rarely see the doctor hitting the review of system points. So 99203 requires that you review at least two to nine systems with the patient. Now, um, this is not an examination. This is just questioning the patient about systems in the body. So um, if any of you on the line uh, this morning or listening to this are billing 99204, then you must document that you reviewed 10 systems with the patient. 203, it's a minimum of two all the way up to nine. So this is what I ask every new patient. Okay, Mr. Jones, any problems in the past or do you presently have uh, problems with any you know, cardiac, respiratory, GI, or GU issues? And if the patient says no, then I'll write down ROS, the patient related, no present or past cardiac, respiratory, GI, or GU problems. And in that one sentence, I was able to cover four systems. Now, a good quality intake questionnaire, like I mentioned earlier, um, will have these systems listed, usually on the back of the page. You know, on page two, it'll list, you know, do you have any problems with your heart, lungs, or, you know, constipation, diarrhea, allergies, uh, fever, chills, diarrhea, constipation, uh, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and patients should check those off. And now, if you review that form, write down in your documentation that you reviewed the form, or write on the form, write that you reviewed it, and you'll get credit for review of systems. That's something that most doctors are missing. They have the form, but they don't acknowledge it. You need to acknowledge the form. Next is the PFSH, and this is just going through, again, a good quality intake form will list these items. So it might say, have you ever had, uh, been in an accident, any trauma to the spine, any, you know, do you smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol, anything like that? You need at least one of those. For 99204, you need three. Here's a quick chart summarizing the codes. You'll see we just went through a 203. Now, this is just the history. There are three key components to billing out new patient codes. Key component number one is the history. Component number two is the exam. And component number three is medical decision making. Here we have just the history, 203. You'll see it's about 30 minutes. One chief complaint, four HBIs, two to nine systems being reviewed, and one PFSH. The next slide is, uh, you know, pretty comprehensive. You maybe you could probably even get away with a 204 if you stretched it. And this is Emily comes in with severe headaches and neck pain, and here are all the HPIs. She said it started suddenly three months ago. She fell while bicycle riding and hit her neck and right shoulder against the ground, and her head got jolted very hard. So I take you through the HPIs. You only need four. I've given you probably about 12 here. And you want to use these as your baseline numbers, you know, like the pain scales and, you know, she cannot sit at the computer for more than 10 minutes. You'll see how I integrate that in future steps when we get to goals. Here's more HPIs. And then we have the last portion here, which is the review of systems. She related no present or past cardiac, respiratory, gastrointestinal, genital, urinary problems. Patient has no past history of spinal trauma or surgery. Patient stated that her mother has osteoarthritis and osteoporosis. Patient smokes one pack of cigarettes per week. Target coding, uh, for those of you on the line that are interested in learning more about what we do, um, we do seminars, we do webinars, we have membership programs. Um, I've written um, eight books on billing, coding, and documentation for chiropractors and physical therapists. We have CDs, DVDs. We offer customizable forms and templates. It could all be uh, checked out at um, www.targetcoding.com, or if you'd like to give us a call and you have any questions about our products and services, telephone number is 1-800-270-7044.